Hi, my name is Ahmad Al-Assad and in this video I'll go through the exercises for diagnosing issues in production with IntelliTrace and Visual Studio 2012. This video has been recorded for handsonvisualstudio.com. IntelliTrace, which was first released in Visual Studio 2010, changed the game for debugging by allowing developers to step back in time to see how an application got into its current state. By exposing events such as file and registry access, exceptions, and method calls, an IntelliTrace file can provide a detailed view into application behavior. In this lab, you will learn how Visual Studio 2012 will extend the capability of IntelliTrace beyond the development and testing organizations by providing IT administrators with the ability to capture IntelliTrace files running from production servers. These files can then be analyzed by developers to help diagnose production issues. In order to complete the lab, you'll need to download Visual Studio 2012 Virtual Machine provided by Microsoft. The virtual machine is available at Brian Skeller's blog site. This lab has two exercises. In exercise number one, we will learn how to use IntelliTrace in production, whereas in exercise number two, we will learn how to debug the IntelliTrace files we got from exercise number one. Exercise number one, using IntelliTrace in production. In this exercise, you will learn how to deploy and use IntelliTrace in production to capture trace information for an ASP.NET application. Now let's switch to the virtual machine. Use the username Adam and the password is uppercase P number two SSW number zero RD. Launch Internet Explorer. and click on the FF Customer Portal link. This website is the customer's portal for Fabricom Fiber support. Now let's click on multiple of these tickets until we receive an error. The error indicates that there was an error retrieving the data from the server. But there could be multiple reasons for that error to happen. Typically, the first step in determining the root cause of an error like this would be to check the logs and perhaps the stack trace for details. If that doesn't provide enough information and the error is not easily reproduced in a development environment, the development team may end up taking a long time in determining the root cause and fix the problem. In installing Visual Studio or other debugging tools in production environment may not be an option. Now let's take a look at how to deploy and use IntelliTrace in a production environment to collect historical debugging data. Open a Windows Explorer window and navigate to the root of the C drive. Note that there are two folders here that were created ahead of time for our use in this lab. There are the IntelliTrace folder and the log file location folder. The IntelliTrace folder stores the standalone IntelliTrace files, whereas the log file location folder will store the IntelliTrace files that will be generated later on in the lab. Now at this point, we would like to make sure that the IIS application pool has access right to the log file location folder. So we'll right click on the log file location folder and go to security and scroll down to 
until we see the Fabricam Fiber.External.Web. Click on it and make sure that it has all the permission needed. Now for our exercise, the permissions has been already added to expedite the process. But in the real life scenario, you need to add the user to the list and give it the proper permissions. Now close this dialog. IntelliTrains can be deployed to a production environment simply by extracting the contents of the IntelliTrace collection.cap file that ships with Visual Studio 2012. This task has also been performed ahead of time in the virtual machine for your convenience, so there is no need for you to perform this step. The IntelliTrace collection.cap file is available at this location. Now we will start IntelliTrace so that we can gather some diagnostic data from the web application. Now we have two options. You can either double click on the start, the start IntelliTrace demo or use PowerShell to start IntelliTrace. I'm going to use PowerShell to show you the steps. Now open PowerShell and execute the following command to import the IntelliTrace PowerShell module. Now to see the command provided by IntelliTrace, you use the following PowerShell command. To get help about any of the PowerShell IntelliTrace command, type something like the following. Take a look at the remarks section. It describes how you can get more detailed examples of the command usage. We are now ready to start IntelliTrace collection. Type the following PowerShell command to start collecting data from the Fabricom Fiber.External.Web IIS application pool and store the resulting and store the resulting iTrace log files in the folder we previously created. When asked to confirm, type Y and then press the Enter key. Now let's launch Internet Explorer and open the Customer Portal website and click on the ticket that generated the error. Now we will stop the IntelliTrace collection to return the production server into its normal state. You have two options. You can either run the stop IntelliTrace demo dot command file found within the scripts folder on the desktop or use PowerShell. In this demo, I'll be using PowerShell. Open the PowerShell application. Import the IntelliTrace module and stop the IntelliTrace collection. and press yes. Let's see if the file actually been exported to to the log file location. And indeed it's there. Exercise number two, debugging with IntelliTrace files from production. In this exercise, you will see how we can use the IntelliTrace file that was generated on a production server to aid in debugging the error that we saw in the previous exercise. Now let's switch to the virtual machine. As you already know, we're using one virtual machine for development and administration. Let's assume that we have already taken this IntelliTrace file and transferred it to a development machine that has Visual Studio 2012 in its own. Double click on the IntelliTrace file to load Visual Studio. In the IntelliTrace summary, expand the exception data section if it's not been already expanded.
Now in this grid, we see all the exceptions that happen to our application, and they're sorted by event type. Now select the last system.nullReference exception found in the list, and then select Start Debugging. After the IntelliTrace debugging session starts, you will see that the IntelliTrace pane is automatically loaded and the location in the code where the exception occurred is highlighted. Now let's open the locals window. Note that the service ticket that assigned to property currently has a null value. This explains why referencing service ticket that assigned to that full name in code resulted in a null reference exception that we saw. At this point, we could file a bug in Team Foundation server and attach the IntelliTrace file to help the development team make the appropriate fix. Now to create a bug, simply click on the team menu, new work item, bug, and under attachment, you can add the IntelliTrace file. And this concludes exercise number two and the lab. In this lab, we learned how we can use IntelliTrace to debug applications in production environment. We also learned how to load the file generated in production environments into a development environment and be able to pinpoint where the error occurred. And at the end of this lab, I would like to thank you for watching this video.